how to profit from kingdom service. I'll waste my life again and again on you. For there is profit to be wasted, Lord, <laughs> on you. I'll waste my life again and again on you. On you. For there is profit to be wasted, Lord. Once it's God, we can waste it. It's on other things we don't have the assurance that there is a reward. But the Bible tells me in Hebrews 6 and verse 10, it said God is not unjust to forget the labor of love that you have shown towards his name. He is not a user and a dumper of men. 1 Corinthians 15, is it 52? He said, but be ye steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor cannot be in vain we have watched the testimonies of men in this kingdom to know that God lifts men he picks them from nothing to make them something when they give themselves totally wholeheartedly and absolutely to his service he doesn't dump he doesn't use men in an entity out of their lives do we understand that even if he borrows their boats to preach he will give them fish at the end of it God is not unjust. He is the hold firm. When they say steadfast, means like you are fastening yourself to something because there are things that will come. Discourage us. That will come to want to weaken you. Distractions, issues of life. He say, hold it. Hold the service. For as much as you know, we know where we are coming from. I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where I am today. I see you doing a new work in my life. Oh Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. We know where we are coming from oh. to access the blessings of kingdom service number one how to access the dividend of kingdom service i've tried to explain to us what kingdom service is and why we must put our hearts into it there is a platform god set on the earth to change the lives of people he puts platform for you to serve with your strength your resources your energy serve the advancement of his kingdom and his purposes and he transforms your life so you serve and he blesses you not that you get blessed first before you serve because if it comes that way you won't even serve at all so how do we enjoy because we've seen many people give their to this god even in the christian faith and then nothing is being written home of their life the life didn't resemble the god they are pouring that's why people just insult them people tell them with all the church what is it building from you and many of them begin to get offended and want to leave god lower in their commitments of god because they feel that they trusted the god so much they kept their effort into his service and they didn't see any profit from it but adventure there are certain things you aren't doing right and that's what i want to talk about is that okay how to enjoy or access the protocols to the dividends or blessings of kingdom service number one it must be done number one righteously malachi 3 and verse 1 to 3 it must be done righteously you can't go and steal and sow seed into church no there's no blessing there you can steal and sow seed and say god should change your life it will work you can't go and get money from prostitution get money from yahoo yahoo and robbery and drop into church and say you are serving god no your service must be done what righteously righteously number two it must be done faithfully number two faithfully not faithfully First Corinthians 4 and verse 2 it said moreover in stewardship it is expedient that a man be found what faithful simply means when you are serving God faithful means you put full faith in what you are doing not one leg in one leg out there is no blessing there that's why I said he that must put his hands on the floor must not look back
I put my hands on the floor. I can't look back. I can't go back. All die, now die. In this God, we die. It's not as if ministry don't work. I'll try this one. We die in it. That's why we pour our life in it. When you know that your prosperity and your commitment will come from your service to God, you will pour your life there. You'll be faithful. But when you feel there are other means, other methods, other ways. What if you lose everything in one day? You can lose it in one day. We've seen great men crash. What happens? If everything goes down the drain in one day, you must serve God faithfully. Full faith, commitment. Not half, half heart, yeah, half heart. No! We will do this Christianity. We will kill ourselves inside. We will pour our life inside. It's not half leg, yeah, half. Mm -mm. We carry the Jesus on our head. That everybody will know this one carries Jesus on his head. Not that some of you, you are ashamed. You can't even talk about church. You can't even talk about the gospel. You are scared to post anything church on your status. The boy or girl you are trying to impress. What if this God sees your breath and tells you, just give me back? Will you see somebody to impress? Be confident of Jesus any day. And so we must do it faithfully. I said not faithfully. Faithfully is that you are doing it to please God. Faithfully is that you are doing it to please man. So when you are doing it faithfully, you only do it when that face is there. When you think you're not there, you do otherwise. Number three, cheerfully. Second Corinthians 9 and verse 6. Say, God love it, a cheerful giver. Do it with joy. I remember our growing up. When they say clean church, we used to be happy. Everybody will join. You carry water, you'll be playing, you'll be joining. You know, you'll be joking and playing with each other as you are cleaning. It's like we are looking up to it. They say church is building. Everybody is there, will be gisting. Now, I don't understand this Gen Z. That's how it was for us. It was a strange. After all, God calls Jesus a perfect builder. We joy one twelve. This must be done with joy. It says that the vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered. Nothing suffocates fruitfulness like, like dryness, like sadness. It didn't happen then joy went away. No, it was joy that went away first. The word because means the reason is because they were not joyful, everything around their life began to dry up. Whether in good times, whether in bad times, he's still God. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can bring by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from the four time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, oh, you are God alone. You are God alone. Whether in the good times or the bad times, that's the mindset of a sound and mature Christian. He's still God. Insult him. Say anything you want to say about him. Just on your TV channel, you see where a woman is jumping. I will serve him for life. He has healed my son. He has opened a blood. Your, 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 your living him doesn't make him godless. We thought without you, he's still God. Smile over challenges. That's why the Bible admonishes us that give thanks to God in all things. For this is the will of God consigning us. That's how we expect us to live our life. Thank Him. Trust this God. Serve Him faithfully. Faithfully. Let's not be controlled by the happenings around your life. Serve Him faithfully. This God lifts men. Sometimes when it looks like there's no way out, everything around your life has turned upside down. Just leave it to this God. Number four. I go go share share mama. I go go share share mama. I go go share share mama. To remove my heart. Number four. It must be done willingly. First Corinthians nine and verse seventeen and Second Corinthians eight twelve. God is not a burden. He is a burden lifter. God is not a burden. Your service must be done willingly. A willing person does not make excuses. He knows that once there is a will, there is what? A way. 
He doesn't create excuses. And the reason is that, the reason is that, so what now happen is, now happen is, no, once there is a will, there is what? A way. God makes the way. Number five, it must be done lovingly. First Corinthians 13 and verse 1 to 3. Say so you can give all you have to the poor, but without love, you are just an empty symbol. There must be a genuine love for God from your heart. And say, I'm doing this thing because I love God. Not because Papa said it. Not because they forced me to. I love this God. If this way I've brought my head under to serve him, I will do it lovingly. From the bowels of my heart. Number six. Diligently. Proverbs 22, 29, Hebrew 11, number six. The God rewards those that diligently seek him. You must put your heart and mind into service. You say it's not easy and I'm tired. Ah, we serve the Lord with all our might and with all our strength. So there is energy involved. You will tire now. It's normal. You will get tired. Serving with all your strength, with all your might. Everything you got must be involved. Number seven, it must be done sacrificially. Psalm 126 verse 5 to 6. And second Samuel 24, 24, David said, I will never give to God what will cost me nothing. I won't give God. It must be done sacrificially. Be willing to sacrifice your pleasure, your time, and your resources, your excuses for the advancement of God's work and kingdom. There is sac In this kingdom, nothing can be profitably done under convenience. It's not possible. Even prayer is... That's why I say, what... Ephraphrodidus, your servant that laboured fervently in prayers. Even Paul admonished that prayer is hard work. It's a labor. It's labor. It's not easy. There is sacrifice involved. Sacrifice is not what you do when you feel like. It is what you feel when you do. What touches you? You it touch you. you know, say this one enter my body. You call it sacrifice. It is not what you do when you feel like. So whenever I have time, when I'm free, inside God walk. And he too, whenever he has time, whenever he's free, we attend to the matters of your life. I said it must be done sacrificially. Number eight, it must be done tirelessly. Galatians 6 and verse 9. He said, be not weary in well doing. For in due season, you will reap your reward. So discouragement and weariness will come, especially when you are close to your reward. But that is when you should hold on well and hold your God tight. Don't give in to it. Number nine, it must be done excellently and of quality. Malachi 1.8 He said, if I be your father, why will you bring a goat with one eye, a blind goat, as offering? And that's how, you know, there's a way you can display honor. You will go and look for mint and say, Lord, I give you this. That's just, some people, are, they are level, they graduate to a way they work with God. They've changed the, the way they work with God is in a different level. That's why you see the way he shows up for them. You check the one that all the bike men rejected. He made you just, this, I won't call it. And say, okay, ah, there's tomorrow's service. That's the only thing that came to your mind to dump it on God. I know if you I should give God money that is torn, cellotaped. If they cellotape my blessing and tear it like that, I will. <laughs> uh -uh. Let's challenge ourselves. Lick up your mind to do the right things. Lick up your mind. It must be done openly. Don't be ashamed to serve God. You are ashamed that you are a Christian. You cannot post any Bible thing, any short clips, anything you will not post on status. Shame is catching you. I'll waste my life again and again on you. On you. There is profit to be wasted, Lord. On you, on you. Number 11, it must be done as unto the Lord. Colossians, Colossians 3 and verse 23. He says, Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Don't look to men for reward or appreciation or applause. Look to God. Don't look to men for appreciation. You will get discouraged. Do it as unto the Lord. Number 12. I'll waste my life again and again on you. On you. For there is profit. There is profit in being wasted. 
if it is on him, there is profit. Once it's on this God, there is what? Profit. When you see God lifting men, they've killed themselves. You know, some of you will look at Joshua and say, ah, oh, look at the liftings, the global acceptability. And like, the man bought his first car a year to when he left Azaria to Abuja. A year. After almost 10 years in church. After 10 years. Pouring his life in the investment on himself. In the investment of the work. Now you've seen it yield. You think it's just, it's just from the blues. Great men, their secrets are rich in their story. Check the stories of men. I have no, zero regrets following God. And I can recommend him to you. Kill yourself. Let them, I said you should get to that point. They should laugh you that you are carrying church on your head. I'll waste my life again and again. On you. On you. For there is profit, there is profit in being wasted, Lord. On you. It must be void of offense. In fact, this is the biggest point. Because whether you like it or not, the Bible says, but know this, that offense will come. When they say something will come, it should be, it's not something you can skip. Because we are dealing with what? Humans. People from different perception of life, different philosophy, different upbringing, different environment they grew, trained by different parents. Is that not so? He said, for who unto the world? Because offense, for it must need that offense is what? When they say the word now must, you know, feel dodger now. You can't. But what you do to the offense becomes how you end in life. Offense will come. They've told you. Somebody will get you angry. You are dealing with human beings. Even you, you don't vest for your parents before. You disown them. You change house. Now you don't change church. Person vest you. God doesn't lift men by mistake. Every lifting was provoked by the intentional actions of men. This God lifts men. That's why most of the times I used to beg people. If you follow a grace, follow it genuinely. It changes life. Please faithfully be committed. Serve him. Get serious with him. And see what he will do with your life. Get serious. If you want to follow him, follow him where? Put your life. Challenge yourself. Don't waste your time here. Give your life. Let him use you. Let God do mighty things with your life. Tell him, Lord, I want to shake this environment for you. Don't get distracted. It's not by jumping here, jumping just stay focused. Just talk to God. You know certain aspect of your life that the retreat has corrected. Say, God, just help me. Help me. Help me. Just help me. You knew how you were coming. You already seen the flavor and the fire of God, but you just got distracted. It's a, it's a, it's a demonic strategy. Talk to him. Say, Lord, help me. The Lord just help me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just same yesterday, today, and forever. He was trying to tell you that this is how he worked yesterday. This is how he is working today. And this is how he will continue to work at seven days. He said that we should remember those which have rule over us, who have given us the word of God, whose faith we should follow, watching to the end of their conversation. Because that is how Jesus worked yesterday. That is how he's working today. And that is how you walk tomorrow. There's no way out. Structures and protocols of the kingdom, you can't break. You break it at your own peril. You will suffer. You will see that you are not advancing. There is, if we have another option, we'll have told you. There's no way out. Lift up your hands. The spirit for service. All these qualities we've listed. The grace to serve you righteously, joyfully, faithfully, sacrificially, the grace to serve you void of offense, serve you as unto the Lord, that the people will see the dividend of service. Lord, I ask that you rest upon them now. In the name of Jesus, the secret.
is in knowing what to do and do it consistently till it produces the result. There are protocols. You must follow it. Be diligent in your commitment to God. The Lord bless and keep you.